Welcome. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Magna Carta Mag 600. So Magna Carta was a company that was started in India in 2014. It's a family run company and as far as I could tell there's at least eight members that work for the company, eight members of the family. So it's a cool family run company and they aimed right from the get-go to make luxury fountain pens. At one point the owners described their pens as you don't own a Magna Carta pen, you are just a custodian of it for the next generation, indicating that these are supposed to be heirloom pieces with high quality. So we can see, let's look at the aesthetics here. So the Magna Carta when it was first released was like a straight black with the gold adornment just like a Pilot 743 would be very similar except where the 743 is kind of um, rounded edges this has more flat edges it's almost like reminiscent of a vintage pen in that regard almost like a waterman or something especially with the uh, the two pins up here holding the uh, the clip on here speaking of that clip let's go ahead and look it carries very high because of that clip design so you've got a beefy probably about an inch sticking out of your pocket and you know it's a beefy bit there it's beautiful it's a beautiful beefy bit but it is definitely beefy what else do we have on the cap we've got the maker's mark right here and then in the back there you could see their seal their maker's mark it's an m and a c intertwined together for Magna Carta. Um, the Magna Carta, the document, if you don't know what that is in history, that's basically a document that gives people their freedom, as in, it basically says a king cannot lock you up without a valid reason. And that's basically the premise of most democratic societies where the police can't actually just lock you in jail. They have to have probable cause, they have to have an actual warrant, they actually have to have proof to go ahead and lock you up. Whereas before the Magna Carta document, um, most, you know, kings could just kind of toss you in the dungeon for, you know, looking at them the wrong way, and then no one would hear from you again. So that's not the way a civilized society runs, and that's what they're emulating. They're saying they want egalitarian access to pens for all. So that's a cool little thing. This particular body is a limited edition exclusive for Goulet pens, and it's like a stacked resin model. It's very reminiscent of the Vacuumatics from Parker from, you know, the early uh, mid-1900s. And then we've got the Visconti Wall Streets are also very similar in look to this. You can see that pattern does carry on to the top. So your last little stacked bit of resin, they left that pattern there, which is nice. They're flatter, but, um, you know, this one's a little bit rounded. This one, you might be able to stand it up, but I've never, you know, cared to stand my pens on end like that. Goulet did have, I think, three other colors. They did have a couple different colors if you're interested in these. All right, let's go under the hood. Before we talk about the nib, let's note that the cap is technically postable, but it only goes on about three of those slices, so it's very thinly uh, held in place, and it makes the pen almost unwieldy in its use because it's then so off balance and so long. So this pen borders on basically being an oversized pen, so there's no need, even without posted, this you know reaches well past the crook of my hand. So. Um, the cap is postable, but it's not something that I would personally post. Even though I don't personally post caps usually, this is definitely not a cap I would post. The grip itself is a tapered grip down to a nice flare. The flare is a little bit more notable than some of the other more subtle flares in other brands. I do like this grip. Uh, the weighting's nice. You know, the weighting is like somewhat right around right around 55-60%, so that's perfect for right where I like it for a little bit of embellishment, but you still have a nice firm control. Let's go ahead and look at that nib. All right, so we've got that nice, beautiful gold nib, extra flexible right from the maker. We've got a heart cut out there for the air hole, reminiscent of those vintage pens again. We've got our maker's mark there, the M and the C, Magna Carta together. Other than that, it's pretty sparing. We do have an ebonite feed. Now, this is really cool. Both this nib and this feed were made in-house, which is unusual for a fountain pen maker to do. So this brand fully invests, and they make all of their own in-house nibs and um, feeds. And, you know, it's a expensive thing to do, but that's one of the things that sets them apart and puts this nib above others. So let's go ahead and take a quick look under the hood. It comes fitted with a converter. Um, and this is a secondary aftermarket converter, but this is where I will say um, QC issues can be 
somewhat apparent at times with this brand. So before I even ordered this brand, I looked into it heavily and there were complaints online of people that had QC issues. So, you know, that was kind of in the back of my mind, but I went ahead and I ordered this. When I got it, primarily um, I had some issues with um, the converter. As you can see in the unboxing video, it was actually loose and rattling around, but the converter would not get a good, solid, airtight fill. Um, which resulted in hard starts, uh, false starts basically. My pen wasn't writing as it should. So I contacted Goulet. They said, um, you know, we can send it back and exchange it, but go ahead and kind of futz around with the, um, the nib unit and see if you can't seal it and make it any air tighter. So that's not something I would normally do to a pen because, you know, it's like buying a new car and them telling you, oh, yeah, go ahead and tighten the lug nuts. You know what I mean? It's like you're, you expect a new pen to work well out of the box. And especially at this price point, that's kind of something that is should not be expected. So, um, you know, I did go ahead and I, you know, tried to tighten. You know, I, I played around with that unit. I did tighten it up a little bit. Um, but as I, you know, took it out and then put it back in, I could feel... Just a little bit of imprecision, I guess I would call it, a little bit of imprecision in the threads. It was something that I could tighten through and, you know, get a good airtight seal where I can now use this well. But, you know, it was just a little bit of, you know, it, something some brands like Pilot are known for that straight up QC inconsistency. This is not necessarily a brand that carries that reputation as of yet. What I will say, though, is if you go ahead and order one of these pens, as I did, I felt still comfortable enough going and ordering one from a verified dealer. Go ahead and just use it a lot on the first, you know, unboxing and opening to make sure that there is no issues. Because if there are any issues, you just want to take care of them while it's still under warranty. And that would be no issue. Goulet Pens, by the way, was great on their contact and their back and forth with their customer service. So I have no doubt that they would have, you know, exchanged this. And we were about to do that until I said, you know, you know, I fussed around with it and I got it to where I'm okay with it. So, oh, on that note, I actually did just perform an experiment with this pen where I had it inked up and capped well and I did not write with it. I left it in my pen case for about 12 to 14 days without picking it up, no agitation, um, just to see how it would do with a you know any um, long-term issues. And I picked it up and wrote a letter or two today and it perfect, perfect right out the gate after that 12 to 14 days. Um, no hard starts at all, beautiful flow and so no issue there. All right, let's go ahead and get you a writing sample now. So this pen as a flex, it starts kind of fine. And then when you add pressure on the downstrokes, you can get line variation. This, my friends, is some of the greatest line variation that I can speak of. And it comes with both the ups and the downs. So let's look at this, right? I had a tiny railroad there. But I would argue that this pen is so flexy and after that railroad, you know, I, I slowed down and I waited for that feed to catch up, no issues. But this pen is so flexy that it can railroad at times. But I don't consider that necessarily a con, even though railroads are a con. And in that sense, you really have to slow down, feel, wait for that feed. But you know, it's like saying this sports car vibrates when I'm going 180 miles an hour. It's like. Yeah, but that's only a problem because it outperforms every other vehicle to that degree. Like, this might railroad on occasion, but that's only because it outflexes everything else on the market. And like I said, once you kind of become accustomed to that and you kind of wait for your pen, you know what I mean? There we go. Once you become accustomed to that and you kind of wait for it, the railroads aren't really an issue. Um, and like I said, it's it, it's only there because this outperforms all my other flex pens as far as sheer line variation. Now the negative aspect of that is the flow is super juicy, way more so than my um, other nibs. So that tends to result in less shading from the inks that I'm using. And it also, in that kind of wet noodle capacity, means that my fines are less fine, so to say, than some of my other, well, all my other flex pens, um, I think have a finer fine than this. So this is kind of a, almost a wet noodle in that regard. And that means your fine lines can't get quite as fine. 
Now let's get to the actual feel of this. So the feel of this nib is more flexy and more soft than any of my other flexes. So as far as just like average writing, This thing is an absolute joy. It's so nice and bouncy. At times I almost feel like I'm painting with a tiny paintbrush. That's just how kind of pliable and soft and flexy this pen is. It's just an amazing, stupendous feel that you can't top. As far as my just beautiful feel for average writing, this pen I think takes my number one spot. This is an awesome, comfortable, soft pen, and it's a joy to write with. Just a spectacular experience to write with this pen. When you flex, you really want to only flex on that downward stroke. You can see this is a lovely flex nib and it out flexes, like I said, all my other flex nibs. And in that regard, it feels just soft and juicy and like I'm writing with a tiny paintbrush at times. All right, let's go ahead and get you through some size comparisons and get you out of here. So this is the Mag 600 here. I'm going to line up all these pens on the right side here. Pilot 743. There we go. So the 743 is definitely more rounded in its body shape, uh, rounded at the ends, a little bit thinner, a little bit shorter. Here we are up against a Retro 51. You could see the Retro 51 is, again, shorter, thinner, and, you know, more conical body, even though it has those flatter ends. Let's see. Here we are against a vanishing point. So here we are up against a vanishing point. Again, vanishing point is thinner, more conical, and a little bit smaller in girth. I'm going to throw it up against one of my River City pens. Um, this one is much more similar in overall girth, although it is less conical and shaped than the Magna Carta. So in this kind of look, this one does have, the Magna Carta does have some more subtle flares to the, um, the body. And I will say too, if you go to the Magna Carta website, even though they used to be only offered in like a black, kind of looking like this, um, in addition to this exclusive from Goulet, they now are making a resin version that is remarkably similar in look to this resin here, which is another reason I took it out for this size comparison, because now you can get a Mag 600 in a color that's similar to this. All right, so let's get to our pros and cons of the Magna Carta Mag 600. All right, so the pros are now the looks, the aesthetics. So I was kind of not too intrigued. I was intrigued by the nib, but not the actual body until they have these more recent colorful variations. So now that they have these, this is a beautiful stacked resin. This pen is gorgeous, especially in the sunlight. So the looks, that is amazing. The nib is fantastic, out of this world, a wonderful experience. The feed is also another beautiful, beautiful thing. That feed keeps up with this. Um, occasionally, you might have a railroad, like we talked about, but 
Oh, I misspelled that. But it's like we talked about, it's kind of a question mark, right? Because it's only a problem because this pen can outflex all others on the market that I've tested, especially all others from st a stock production line. So it can railroad, but it only happens when you push it to a limit past where others wouldn't even dare to venture. So that's why I'm kind of like, it's a con, but is it really? Because it, it only happens because it's that good. Kind of a con, kind of a pro. Another thing that's kind of like that, and I'll put that kind of to the side here too, is the size, right? So the size is bigger than pretty much everything else. So I kind of don't mind an oversized pen. I like that in this model, um, especially with this lovely writing nib, but it's really big. So that size could also be a con if you don't care for big pens. So that's why I'm kind of including these in this kind of question mark zone where it's a con, but is it really? The pricing is kind of a uh, a con, you know, these are up amongst kind of grail territory, they're not inexpensive pens, so there is that to be considered, but you get a lot for what you pay for, especially with an in-house gold nib and an in-house feed and an in-house design. I do think that these are worth the price, I do think you get what you pay for in that regard. Um, let's go back to why that's so, is that flex, that flex capability is amazing. So that is the pro, that's the reason you buy this pen is for that flexi nib. And finally, we are gonna have to go ahead and say again, the QC. The QC is a little bit suspect at times. I would not buy one of these secondhand if someone's just offloading it in the secondary market. You don't necessarily know if they got a dud. So I would stick to authorized dealers, but then that's never a, necessarily a bad thing for the company. If someone else says, hey, only buy from authorized dealers, that's kind of like your dream come true anyway, right? But an authorized dealer is gonna stand behind their product. And if you do get any sort of QC issues, that authorized dealer is gonna go ahead and replace that pen for you. So you take care of those issues. So the QC could improve a little bit, um, again, as far as, in my experience, the threading uh, on the housing, the nib housing here, um, is something to note. So, But as any pen, that just means as soon as you get it, you want to use it, you want to use it well, get any issues documented and uh, you know possibly taken care of with a pen exchange or anything else while it's still under that warranty. All right, my friends, we have arrived at the conclusions for this Magna Carta Mag 600. This is just an out of this world experience. As far as just writing alone, don't factor anything else in, but this feels like you're writing with a tiny paintbrush at times. Like that's how soft and flexible and just lovely of an experience this pen creates. The aesthetics of this model are gorgeous, I love it. The um, QC, you know, it could get a little bit more stringent, but you know, it's still within the realm that I'm willing to go ahead and order these pens. Um, like I said, go ahead and order one from an authorized dealer. I necessarily wouldn't go secondary market for these because of those potential issues, but go ahead and order one from a, uh, a nice authorized dealer and then you've got nothing to fear. The grip is lovely. It's a nice tapered grip down to that flare, so no problem indexing there. And just the fact that they make their own nibs, the fact that they make their own feeds, that's a, a gorgeous thing and it's something to be proud of in this day and age. The pen does post, but I don't like posted pens and this one is exceptionally long while it is posted and it only goes like three layers down, three little slices here. So it's very weakly posted if you do post it. But it's so long, it almost borders on oversize. So it is bigger than all of my other personal pens in my collection. So in that sense, it's both a pro and a con, right? It's it's bigger, it's more kingly than most, but at the same time, it's not something for necessarily my wife who you know has smaller hands. So overall, this is one of my top writing experiences. So take that as you will. When I just want to write a letter and enjoy the pleasure of writing, whether or not I actually think about the flex, because it's a bit of a wet noodle, so in that regard, the line variation could get a little bit better in some of its competition. But, you know, that results in just such an easy flow, and you can push it to those limits, like we talked about, where this outflexes everything else on the market, 
and a stock production run pen. You might get an occasional railroad, but that's because it can outperform everything else. So you do have to be a little bit cognizant of when you do flex, but if you're just not focused on flexing and you're just writing as typical and I'm just writing a letter to someone, this pen has a wonderful feel. It's so soft, it's so not quite bouncy. It's almost like that paintbrush feel like I talked about, but it's a lovely feel and it's definitely, I think, one of my top writers overall. So thank you very much for sticking with us on this review of the Magna Carta Mag 600. Maybe now you'll know if this pen is for you, as it is definitely a pen for me.